Delegate Delegate has the floor. You know, so it was two months ago that Dr. Vanessa Tyson released a statement that she'd been sexually assaulted by Virginia's Lieutenant Governor, Justin Fairfax. She stated that she was an attendee at the Democratic National Convention in 2004 and that while visiting Fairfax's hotel room, he sexually assaulted her. She stated that she was initially was undecided about whether she would speak out publicly because she said, quote, I knew that if I did so, I would immediately face accusations about my motives, be branded as a liar, as is routinely the case when women come forward with allegations of sexual misconduct against prominent men. Now, once the accusations became public, Lieutenant Governor Fairfax immediately issued his denial. He claimed that the Washington Post had investigated the claims and found, quote, significant red flags and inconsistencies within the allegation. But we now know that wasn't true. The Post found no such inconsistencies or red flags. Fairfax next said he wanted the FBI to investigate what happened. But he said this knowing that the FBI has no jurisdiction over the matter. Their agents have no legal basis or ability to conduct such an investigation. Lieutenant Governor Fairfax also said there was no sexual assault. He said Tyson was, quote, very interested in him. She was very much into a consensual encounter. Dr. Tyson says the opposite. She said she cried and gagged and that, quote, I cannot believe, given my obvious distress, that Mr. Fairfax thought this forced sexual act was consensual. And then Lieutenant Governor Fairfax said the accusation be, should be disregarded because there was, quote, zero corroboration. Completely uncorroborated, he said. And then, of course, a few days later, Meredith Watson stepped forward to say she, too, had been sexually assaulted by him while they were students at Duke. In addition, the newspaper report said that her account was corroborated because she had promptly told someone else what had happened to her. Lastly, some, including some on this very floor, have said that Ms. Watson and Dr. Tyson should be forced to pursue their allegations through the criminal process before we will give them a hearing. But while this is an option for them, that's not what Mrs. Watson and Tyson want to do. So what do they want? They made it very clear. Dr. Tyson said, I would want Meredith, myself, and Mr. Fairfax to be able to speak, to be heard. And particularly for survivors, I think this is incredibly important. We need to be treated as the human beings that we are. Meredith Watson also called for a public hearing. She said, quote, I am frustrated by calls for an investigation rather than a public hearing into these matters. Such investigations are secret proceedings out of the public eye, leaving victims vulnerable to selective leaks and smears. And we all know how such investigations end with inconclusive results. My privacy has already been violated, yet I am still willing to testify under oath. Now, both women have stated that they will only testify if the hearing is bipartisan. If both parties agree to participate and give them their chance to speak, to be heard. This is their request. So to that end, on March 25th, Republicans again proposed a bipartisan hearing. I laid out a detailed proposal for a two-day hearing before a 5-5 subcommittee, meaning five Republicans and five Democrats, where each side would get to choose its own members. Tyson, Watson, and Fairfax would all be invited, could testify alongside their lawyers, could present other evidence. I proposed time limitations and some general dates. But at the end, I wrote that if the Democrats didn't like any of these provisions, I would welcome, quote, any counterproposals that would create a bipartisan process to allow the three witnesses to testify, present evidence, and answer questions. For example, I said, if you would prefer four members or six members, I'm open to that. If you would prefer to this be done in September, I'm open to that. If you would like to give the witnesses more time to testify, I'm open to that. The goal is to allow all three a chance to be heard and taken seriously, as both women have requested. This proposal was rejected. And that leaves us where we are today. To be crystal clear, nobody's listening. Ms. Watson and Dr. Tyson want a bipartisan hearing. Republicans want a bipartisan hearing, but the Democrats have rejected our proposal that would have created this. This is good news for Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, but a bad day for sexual assault survivors who simply want their chance to be heard. I underline this. These women are not even getting a hearing. Now, both sides have issued their press releases calling on Lieutenant Governor Fairfax to resign, but he is still in his office a couple feet from here, presiding over the Senate and breaking tie votes. Everyone says Watson and Tyson should be heard, but when an offer, when a proposal is made to make this possible, it was blocked. 
Now, a few moments ago, Minority Leader stated on this floor that the Democrats, quote, unequivocally support Dr. Tyson's and Ms. Watson's right to share their stories publicly. So fine, this is your chance to prove it. You've had 60 days to come up with a proposal for a hearing, and all we've seen is one half of one sentence in your letter suggesting that you would, quote, remain open to discussing the option of engaging an independent third party to conduct the hearing. Don't say who, don't say how, don't say when. Most importantly, you didn't say whether the plan would provide the bipartisan public hearing that Vanessa Tyson and Meredith Watson are asking for. They've been very clear that they don't want some backroom secret deal, not some backward, excuse me, secret backroom investigation. They want a chance to be heard. So, if you're actually ready to propose or support a public hearing, if there is anything you would say yes to, then let's do it. Dr. Tyson and Ms. Watson have said they will not come and testify unless the hearing is bipartisan, which means you, the Democratic Caucus, has the power to stop this, and you have the power to make this happen. So, right now, say yes. Raise your hand, nod your head, and I will ask the Speaker to call a recess. We'll have a Courts of Justice Committee meeting right now. Go downstairs, in the hole, hear your proposal, and then I'll get on the phone, I'll get the lawyers from Ms. Watson and Dr. Tyson, see if it provides the public hearing they want. If they're okay, we'll be okay. We will schedule this today. Don't let this day end. We can make this happen. Just say yes. We Republicans stand ready to give Ms. Watson and Dr. Tyson the bipartisan public hearing they've asked for. We ask our Democratic colleagues to join us and give them their chance to be heard. Thank you. Delegate from Hanover, Delegate Peace.